stepped on the field, a warrior so bold, center of the team, a story to be told, two-time All-State, he gave it all he had, in the game of life, he always played it glad, Reverend Dream, oh can't you see, a soldier of faith, a champion to be. The rain to the pulpit, he stands so tall, spread love and salvation, he's given his all. Thank you for coming in, ladies and gentlemen. It's another daily devotional by yours truly, Reverend Dream. We hope tonight finds you in peace and in health and in love. And we pray that salvation is with you. We got uh, another verse tonight. Sorry, I'm a little hot. I had to take off the toboggan. Uh, for those who watched the other devotionals, knew that I had toboggan on. Now, these might not fall into sort to which way they go when I post them. So you won't, might not know it till later, till I, you hear me tell you. But tonight, we're going to read from the book of Jude. And uh, we want to start out with chapter 1. It's the general epistle of Jude. Okay, we're going to start with verse 1. And we're going to read till the Holy Spirit tells us to stop. So I hope you're ready. Here we go. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called, mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave the diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was the needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lavishness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever had them men that you know that did that? Was something that you knew automatic they wasn't of him, man. They denied him all along. They didn't believe in him. They didn't trust in him. They was wicked men. I knew a few. Me being one of them. I thank the Lord God every day that he removed the old me and placed in a new one. Some of you are out there that are listening or struggling today. You too are where I used to be. Some are already where I'm at now. And for you, I say hallelujah. I'm not coming for you. I'm not stepping on your toes. Matter of fact, you might be able to step on mine. And I would accept it. Because iron sharpens iron. But for those who don't have that and are not where I'm at today, I'm here for you. What can I do for you? I can lighten you on the words of God. I can tell you where salvation can be found if you choose for it. Is it something that I could do for you? No. It takes your free will takes you being honest to yourself to know that he is the one in charge. But if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, 
Believe wholeheartedly in him. And you will find him as I have today. I pray that for you. Matter of fact, I pray that every day for you. No matter where you are, who you are, or why you are. Because I believe everyone deserves salvation. Not just one. Not the wealthy. Not the homeless. But everyone. No matter if you're a tax collector, a baker, football player, or dressmaker. God said you're worthy, even when you don't feel that you are. I know there's a lot of people out here that's battling addiction today. Perversion. Madness in the mind. Hate. Discontent. People that are looking to destroy others for their own personal gain. For you, I pray. For you, I'm here. Do I see myself as better than you? Far from it. I see myself as been where you've been. And I won't go back. Why, preacher man, why is it so important to be where you're at? When he comes back, you'll know. I don't have to sit here and tell you for hours where I feel that you should be. When you know all along where you need to be anyway. Why should I have to tell you something that you already understand? The Holy Spirit tonight is asking me to ask you, are you prepared? If you do not wake up tomorrow, where will you wake up at? Will you leave a family behind that are worried where your salvation will be? Or will you leave a family that will guarantee to know where to find you when they get there? It's a daunting realization. But it's a realization, needless to say. You hear that siren? That's a siren that I'm guaranteeing you I know what it is. A sound of an ambulance. Did that person make it to where that they would have salvation? Will that person make it tonight to go home to their family, friends, or loved ones? Is that person saved? These are the questions I think about when I see this ambulance go by. What is your thought? What about if I was you in that ambulance tonight? What about if you didn't have that chance and you was hit instantly and you didn't shout out the name Jesus Christ to save you? Where would you be? And that's why I'm in the valley tonight. I'm looking for you, wherever you may be. You know God sent me here for you, or I'd be in heaven with him right now, peaceful, joyful, and happy. But I must give up mine, my peacefulness, for you today. Is it worth it to me? You bet it is. I give up my life on the battlefield that others may ever have a chance to serve God, the same God that I'm serving right now. The words that I'm using right now, they came from him that he's giving you today. Isn't that the biggest gift I could have given you? Or is it? I think the biggest gift I could have given you besides freedom is the word of God.
There's a gnat in here that's driving me nuts. It's like those that refuse salvation. Eventually, their time runs out. Some find it along the way, but others just disappear. Let's hope that ain't you as we continue to read. I would therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believeth, believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitations, he that hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise domination, and speak evil of dignities. <sighs> Guys, that's a big one. It's bigger than I really wanted to speak. But the Holy Spirit told me to speak it to you. So there's somebody out there that's listening that he's talking to. God saved all these people out of his, his, uh, Egypt. And then he destroyed them. He destroyed them. Brought them all through Egypt. Let them think, hey, it was perfect in all they did. When he knew there wasn't. Even the angels, not their first estate, they left their own habitation habitation he has reserved an everlasting change under darkness until the judgment of the great day can you imagine being an angel and God remove you from it and put you in darkness till the rest of the day is to where that you will spend eternity in the fire of hell. And then he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah and that city who's full of fortification and evil and lust and strange flesh and vengeance was God's. He burned them to ashes because he's seen their sin. He knew it. Like he knows your sin. Do you think Jesus would do that to you today? Do you think God would play a wrath upon you that no one else could see but would consume you and all that you are or all that you would be? If you believe he wouldn't, Bible right here says he would. Now let me ask you something. Will you be ready for that? Or are you just going to tell him that he has no control over your life? That you do as you well as you please and he will get over it. If you are that courageous or should I say that stupid? You're braver than me. And I got the heart of a warrior. There will be a time of reckoning. Where your sins will be known if you're not saved. The 
question is, will you be ready for that day? It's coming soon. It's like that train that rolls through here all the time. Train of salvation. Why not talk about getting on board? Go ahead and crawl in on on and prepare for it. Not let it leave you on by. Not let it think that you're not worthy when I know you are. Now, will you believe in him? Or will you let it pass you by? The rest is up to you. I can't do nothing no more than what I've done. I can't tell no more than what I've done told. I can't preach no more than I've already preached. Because the rest of it, the rest of it is up to you. I pray tonight that you come to the Lord in prayer, that you ask him for forgiveness, that you humbly get on your knees and bow before him and ask honestly if you can have salvation by trusting in his son that, that gave his life that you may have a a life eternal of believing in him and dying and rising on the third day and you repent from your sins and accepting him as your Lord and Savior if tonight you do that hallelujah praise God praise God to the highest and if you don't I'll think about you tonight as I lay in bed say my nightly prayers and as I get up in the morning and say my daily prayers as I go through my day and say my daily prayers all through the day you will be on my lips even if I don't know you it won't matter Cause I still care. If I didn't care, would I be here now? I want to tell you something. And I'm going to be honest. I care about each and every one of y'all more than what you realize. More than what you probably care about yourself. Why? Because I was one that didn't care about himself at all. I had a wife that cared about me. Cared about me immensely, still does. But where I messed up, I didn't care about myself. As most of you don't out here today. Because you're too busy running here and there and seeking life. Seeking what you should think that you should seek. Instead of seeking the Lord first. <coughs> when I was sitting here and my screen door of my house swung wide open. And as I looked up, the first thing I seen on my door is that white cross that hangs there. It's a reminder. It's surreal. What I must do to continue to seek him daily and ask if you want to come along for the ride Am I one of them old-fashioned preachers that's going to scream at you, beat you down, berate you, and belittle you? I'm going to come at you like Jesus would, honestly, forthright. 
No more, no less. <coughs> the rest, the rest is up to you. The question is, what would you choose? I pray tonight that you choose right. And if you don't, I'll see you on the next devotion. And hopefully you will by then. Salvation, he's given his all. Five time tough man, he stood through the fight. With fist of fire, he brought the light. A judge and coordinator, his wisdom brandy. In the heart of the battle, his spirit won't sleep. Reverend Dream. Oh, can't you see, a soldier of faith, a champion to be. <coughs> Come to him tonight. Don't wait. Here's your chance. Please. Here's your chance. I want you to know I love you. My heart is with you. Believe in yourself as I believe in you. Remember, as my friend Tender says, I love you, but Jesus loves you so, so much more. Eric B. tells me to tell you, don't forget to pray. And if you can say the prayer to the people that's in the storms, whether it's here in this country or someone else's, or it's just in life storms. Please say that prayer for that person, even if it's yourself. My name is Reverend Train, and I pray for you, and I love you. God bless you. Have a marvelous day or night. Till we see each other again, I'll be thinking of you.